Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. <clears throat> this is the book of John, chapter 6, starting at the 32nd verse. Okay. It says, Then Yahweh said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God power is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Yahweh said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I say unto you, that ye also have seen me, and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this the Father's will, which hath sent me, that all of all which has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up at the last day. I want to saw all praises, glory, and honor due to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. I like to give a double shalom. To all the elders, bishops, and apostles of the Great Millstone. Okay. I'd like to give a double shalom, double honors and salutations to the 144, the hope for the elect. Okay. And I would like to give a shalom to all you brothers and sisters out there who believe in this knowledge, this truth, this understanding, searching the scriptures, trying to find out what is required of you by Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shai. Okay. Yahweh. Being the true name of the Heavenly Father, which means he to be or he exists, which the world ignorantly think that his name is God or Lord. That's simply not the truth. OK, the true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh and the true name of the beloved Heavenly Son is Yahweh Shai. OK, and his name means he the savior or he the deliverer. OK, which the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. OK. OK, the name of our, our savior, our mediator, our deliverer, his true name is Yahweh Shai. OK. That's the true name of the savior, Yahweh Shai, because Jesus, that word Jesus is not a Hebrew word. There's no letter J. OK, in the in the Hebrew um, um, alphabet. OK. OK. There's no J's, there's no E's, okay? Okay, there's no U's. The only vowels that you have in the Hebrew alphabet is A and I, okay? If you change the letters, you change the meaning. So, so-called Jesus is not his real name. I don't give a good goddamn what are you bonehead Christians talking about, okay? Yah. Uh, Yahushua and all those weird names that is not his name okay look up the 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 paleo uh um uh Hebrew okay and see if you find all them funny vowels the only vowel you're gonna find is a and I okay so uh uh the so-called Jesus is not his name his true name is Yahweh Shai okay this is your brother, Howard Shai, okay, GMS St. Louis, back at you with another lesson in sincerity and truth and through the power and spirit of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, okay? 
And the name of today's lesson is, and for this cause, he is the mediator, okay? Yahweh Shai is the mediator, okay? As you can see in this John 6, starting at the 32nd verse, okay? You know, uh, Yahweh Shai was explaining that, uh, you know, Moses uh, uh, didn't really give you the bread of heaven, okay? Okay. That that Yahweh giveth you the true bread from heaven. Okay? And he's explaining that the bread of heaven is he that cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Right. Give you um a words uh and 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 and, and, and the law, statutes, and commandments and words and 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 and, and, and statutes to live by to help you live. OK, to help you through this world. OK. And Yahweh Shah was explaining, he said, I am the bread of life. When they when the person asked him, you know, give us more of this bread. He said, I am the bread of life. OK. OK, if, if you if you follow after me and, and do what I tell you to do, you never be hungry and you never be thirsty. But you see me and don't even believe me. OK. OK. And, and Yahweh Shai went on to uh, further explain that him that come to me, he not going to cast you out. And everything that the father has given him. OK. OK. He, he's not going to he's not going to lose them. OK. But he's all those that believe in him, all those that the father has given him. OK. And all those that come to him. OK. He, he going to try to raise them up. He going to not try, but he's going to raise them up. In the last day, okay, when Yahweh Shai returns, okay, to 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 save, as the Christian uh, church like to say, to give true salvation, the real salvation, okay, because as long as you're down here on this earth, okay, you're not saved, okay, you could be circumcised of the mind, Okay, you could your mind could your mind and your heart could be circumcised, which means that you change your way of thinking, okay, about how you live and, and you live according to to the scriptures, okay? But you're not saved until Yahweh Shai comes and redeems you from this earth. Okay. Okay. That's 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 salvation. Okay. That that's salvation. Okay. So without further ado, let's jump off into this lesson. OK, we're going to go to the book of Hebrews, right? We're going to start at Hebrews chapter nine, because I, I read to John, John six to establish that Yahweh Shai came to do the will of the father that sent him. OK, and that he's the true bread of life. OK. But when we go to Hebrews nine, we start at six and it says now when these things were thus are ordained. OK. And the things that they're speaking of is how back in the day, you know, uh, pursuant to the book of numbers, uh, I'm sorry, to pursuant to the book of Leviticus and numbers, how the priest used to have a give a blood sacrifice. For remissions of sins, the people had to bring a a, a, a lamb or a goat without spot, a spot or blemish that the priest could offer for a sacrifice. OK, it says now when these things were thus ordained, the priest went always to the first tabernacle. OK, accomplishing the service of God power. Now, what they're speaking of could be found in the book of Leviticus chapters two through five. In Numbers chapter three and Numbers chapter eight and how the service of the Levites were to kill the offering that the people brung for remissions of sins, sprinkled the blood of the goat or the ram around the altar and to burn the flesh, to, to clean it, to wash it and to burn the flesh. OK, this is what the the uh, uh, the accomplished the servants of, of God. OK. This is what the Levites did. Okay. Verse seven, but until the second went the high priest alone 
once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. OK, so back in the second room of the tabernacle. OK, this is where the priest went alone because why he was he was supposedly clean. OK, and he they were the only one that can enter into the room where the uh, Ark of the Covenant and uh, all the, the, the holiest of holies could go and offer a sacrifice. OK. OK. Verse eight, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, thus signifying that the way unto the holiest of all ways were not yet manifest while as the first tabernacle was yet standing. Right. So. The Holy Spirit, you know, um, wasn't yet accessible. OK, because of the uh, the people always needed the priests. And a, a, a blood sacrifice in order to access uh, forgiveness, of skin, uh, forgiveness of sins. OK. OK. This was this was the. Uh, uh, um, how can I say this was the first way of doing it until the, the, the more a better way could be established. OK. This was the first establishment before the second establishment could be made where. Uh, you didn't you didn't ha necessarily have to have a priest or blood, quote unquote, uh, 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 animal to sacrifice for remissions of sins. OK. OK. Verse nine, which was a figure for the time present. Right. It was just uh, uh, a way to be done for the time present in which we offered both gift and sacrifices. Right. That could not that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience. Right. So just because we offered sacrifices of goats and, and, and lambs and stuff like that, it cleansed, it cleansed our flesh, but ne couldn't necessarily cleanse our spirit. Okay. Uh, uh, it couldn't cleanse our conscience. Uh, uh, it couldn't clean our conscience of what we did. Okay. And that's what it's talking about. Okay. Which right verse ten, which only which stood only in meats and drinks, and diverse washings, and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. Right, this is what we had to do until uh, Yahweh Shai came along and made a greater sacrifice. Okay, verse eleven. Right, but Hamashiach being come, and high priest. Of good things to come, talking about the, the re redemption of sin, the gospel, you know, telling the good news, okay, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, right? So when Yahweh Shai came along and, 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 and gave the ultimate sacrifice for remissions of sins, okay? It, it 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 cleared our conscience okay okay it was it was spiritual okay that's why it means it says um not made with hands okay because the spirit is is uh it it is it, it's not it's not carnal it's not flesh it's not it's not tangible that's why it means it's not, it's not made with hands okay Verse 12, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood. Right. He entered once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Right. OK, which which was which the, the eternal redemption for us. Right. Which was saving of our of our souls. OK, it was nothing carnal. Uh, is not a carnal redemption. It's not something that you could buy or uh, obtain uh, cornerly. Okay, when Yahweh Shai, you know, made the ultimate sacrifice, it was to save our souls, our inner man. Okay, okay. For if the blood of of bulls and go of goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctified to the purifying of the flesh. Right. And the uh, verse 13 goes into numbers 19, where really the whole chapters of uh, numbers 19. Okay. 
but let's get a, a quick brief view, okay, of what it's talking about in this uh, verse 13. We're going to go to Numbers, Salakia, bear with me, Numbers 19, right? And we're going to just do a quick overview at starting at the 14th verse. And this is the law. When a man dieth in a tent, all that come into the tent and all that is in the tent shall be unclean seven days. And every open vessel which has no covering bound upon it is unclean. Right. Like you got a cup or, 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 or like a, a cup of wine or water, whatever you drinking. When that person dies, okay, in the tent and it's uncovered, it's still is considered unclean, okay? And whosoever touches one that is slain with the sword in open fields or a dead body or a bone of a man or a grave shall be unclean seven days, right? So as, as Israelites, right, we can't, okay, we, we're not supposed to, um uh we could okay we could touch it right because the in our law that person has to be buried if he's an israelite right okay he has to be buried before sundown but once you touch it you have to wash it was based this law is basically saying you got to wash your wash yourself okay okay for an unclean person they shall take of the ashes of a burnt heifer of purification for sin and running water and shall be there. Shall, I'm sorry. And shall be put there to in a vessel, right? You got to mix the ashes of a heifer and water and is put into a vessel, right? Okay. And that goes into, um, right. Um, so like, yeah, you Okay. And for an unclean person, they shall take the take the ashes of the burnt heifer of purification for sin, and one in water shall be put there into a vessel, and a clean person shall take hyssop and dip it into the water and sprinkle it upon the tent and upon the vessels and upon the persons that that were there and upon him that touches a bone or slain or one slain or one dead or a grave, right? And the unclean person shall sprinkle upon the unclean on the third day and on the seventh day. And on the seventh day, he shall purify himself and wash his clothes and bathe himself in water. And he shall be clean at evening. Right. I kind of got ahead of myself, but you got to be sprinkled with the ashes uh, and water. OK, on the third day and on the seventh day, you got to wash all your clothes. OK. Yeah, on the third day and the seventh day, you wash, you wash your clothes, okay, and purify yourself and you shall be clean, okay? So that's kind of going into what it's talking about on the Hebrews, uh, uh, Hebrews uh, 9 and 13, okay? So like you. Okay, so that only... That only purified the, the flesh and the tangible carnal things, right? How Verse 14, how much more shall the blood of Hamashiach, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God power, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God power, right? So it's saying that uh, the blood of Hamashiach, right? Through the eternal spirit offered himself without without spot. Yeah, right, because Yahweh Sh Shai did not did not sin. Okay. Okay. And when he gave himself, right, it wasn't uh uh it wasn't uh uh, uh only for the corner, but for the spirit to cleanse your spirit, to cleanse your conscience, okay, from uh the killing of the animals and the sin. OK. But it was a, a, a sacrifice unto Yahweh to give us salvation, to
to cleanse our conscience and give us salvation. OK. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. Right. OK. He is our go between. He is our Yahweh Shah is our go between. OK. He he plead to the Heavenly Father on our behalf. That's why they call him the mediator. OK. He sacrificed to Yahweh on our behalf. OK. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament that by means of death for the redemption of transgression that we are under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Right. Right. And, you know, you notice how the scripture always talk about they which are called. OK, so <clears throat> if you dig down deeper into these scriptures, right. Salvation, OK. Salvation this time when you have a shot come back is for the elect. OK, because two two thirds. OK, uh, the Heavenly Father's chosen people are going to die. OK, the Heavenly Father is not um, he's not giving out salvation as he did when uh, we came out of the land of Israel. OK. He's not he's not redeeming everybody. OK, Yahweh Shai is only dealing with a select number of people. OK. OK. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be death of the tester. Right. So when you go into this word testament, it goes into where, uh, the word will like a living will, some something that somebody writes. Uh, for them to happen after they pass away. OK, for where a will is, there must also be a necessity. I'm sorry, there must also of necessity be the death of the tester. Right. So in order for the will to go into effect, that person that wrote the will has to pass away. OK, for a testament is the force after man are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the tester liveth. Right. Right. And that goes into um, uh, Luke uh, 5 and uh, 33. As a matter of fact, let's get it. Goes into Luke 5 and 33, right? Which says, right? Right. Luke five and thirty three. And they said unto him, why do the disciples of John fast often and make prayers? And likewise, the disciples of the Pharisees, but thine eat and drink. Right. So. Um, this was a person asking Yahweh Shai, you know, why did John? OK, the prophet John. um him and all the disciples okay they they uh they fast okay and they pray all the time and also the pharisees okay they fast and they and they pray all the time but the the disciples that was with yahweh shy they always eat and drink and he said unto him this was yeah yahweh shy speaking okay can you make the children of the bride bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them okay OK, and this was Yahweh Shai basically saying, I'm here. OK, I'm here among uh, uh, the children of Israel, so they don't have to make sacrifices. They could come to me. OK, and 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 ask what they want, because Yahweh Shai was walking about the land. OK, he was uh, telling the people he was healing the people. OK, he was healing the people and talking to the Israelites and saying that salvation is here. The kingdom uh, of the heavenly father, you know, the kingdom of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh is here. OK, your salvation is, is here. If you believe on me. You know, you should have a, a salvation. OK, he was right there. So there was no need at that particular time while Yahweh Shai was on the uh, walking the uh, while he was on the earth, there was no need for uh, uh, fasting and praying. All you had to do was seek out 
Yahweh Shah, and he would heal you. Ask him and he'll heal you. Okay? Okay? He was there. Okay? Okay? Uh, but uh, verse 35, but the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them. And then shall they fast in those days. Okay? So it makes sense. It's just like, for a, a lack of a per, better term, you know, uh, the, 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 uh, uh, the child, okay, asking his parents, okay, hey, hey, can I have a, uh, can I have an apple or what, whatever it is, okay? Okay? You know? And, and the parent give it to them. But once the child is grown, okay, he got to go out there and work for it. Okay, he got to earn money, work for it, then go to the store and get it. Okay. Okay, I, I think that was kind of a, a horrible an analogy, but it's like it. But, you know, you understand what I'm trying to say? Like, you know, there was no need for fasting and praying since. Yahweh Shai was right there. Okay? He was right there. Okay. You know, but 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 you know, that's how we that's how we made sacrifices back back in those days. And we still do today through fasting and praying and giving thanks, okay? And you know, just to give you uh more examples, we can go to um Hebrews, right, chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13 and the 14th verse, right? It says, right? For here have we no continuing city, but we seek one to come, right? And that's talking about uh, uh, salvation, redemption from this present era, this present world, okay? It says, by him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise under praise to God continually, that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Right. Right. Giving thanks to his name. Okay. Yahweh, Wah, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. Okay. Now you could say, you could say, uh, uh, God or Lord. Okay. But that's not his name. Okay. For those of you that don't know. God or Lord is not his name. Jesus Christ is not his name. Okay. Okay. Those of us that in this truth, we say the water, Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, or Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, the water. Yahweh being the true name of the Heavenly Father. Okay. Bahashem in the name of, okay, Yahweh Shai which is the true name of the heavenly, uh, beloved heavenly son. Okay. And the water mean thanks in, in the Hebrew language. Okay. Let's get another one. We're going to go to the book of Psalms, right? Salakia. We're going to go to the book of Psalms. Psalms 50. Psalms 50 and 14. It says, Offer unto God power, thanksgiving, and pay thy vows unto the Most High. Right. Okay. And you offer uh, thanksgiving unto God by telling him thank you. Like, like I just, just like, just like the last uh, scripture, I gave an example. Okay. And pay thy vows unto the Most High. Okay. 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 Let's get another one. We're going to go to the book of the book of Hosea, right? 14 and 2. Okay. Uh, we're going to start at the first verse. It says, uh, book of Hosea 14, it says, O Israel, return unto the Lord, Yahweh thy God, for thou hast fallen by thine iniquity, right? Take with you words and turn unto the Lord, Yahweh, say unto him, Take away all iniquity and receive us graciously. So we will render the calves of our lips right. Giving thanks 
praises, glory, and honor to who? Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. Okay? We, but the point being, so we will render the calves of our lips. And that was the calves is kind of like a metaphor, right? For saying we give a praise and thanks to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. And that's how we make sacrifices. Okay. And those were just a couple of scriptures to show an example of how we give, uh, uh, make sacrifices unto Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. Okay. Because the scripture says, take with you words and turn unto the Lord Yahweh and say unto him, Okay, we asking for uh, forgiveness that take away our iniquity and receive us graciously. Okay, okay, you you ask for sins and you being uh, 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 humble. Okay, but the point is, so we will, so we will we render the calves of our lips. Okay. Which which signifies we giving sacrifices through uh, uh, praise, thanks, okay, and prayer, and fasting, okay, okay. So we're gonna go back to the book of Hebrew, right? Let's go back to the Hebrew, right? Hebrew nine, and where did we leave off? Right, I think it was around the seventeenth verse, right? Whereupon, verse 18, whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. Right. Okay. Because the scripture says, uh, um, yeah, right. Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood because, uh, as we read, Moses would take the, the, the high sop, the hyssop and sprinkle the tabernacle. And around the altar and the, the, the priest, when they made the sacrifices, they would sprinkle the 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 uh, the first tabernacle and around the altar. OK, verse 19, for when Moses has spoken, spoken every precept to all the people, according to the law. Right. He took the blood of the calves of goats with water. And scarlet wool, red wool. Right. And high sop and sprinkled both the book. And all the people, right? So you can't have a um, a will without blood, okay? You can't have a testament without blood, right? Saying, "This is the this is the blood of the testament which God has enjoined unto us," right? Because the law, statutes, and commandments were only given to the Israelites, okay? Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry, right? So, he's, like I said, he sprinkled the altar, uh, the first tabernacle, and all the men, okay, of the, of the ministry. He sprinkled all the, uh, all the, uh, all the uh, Levites, okay? Because they had to be clean too, okay? Verse 22, and almost all things are by the law purged with blood and without shedding of blood is no remission. Right. And that goes into um, Leviticus uh, chapter 17, verse 11. Let's get it. OK, Leviticus. Uh, Salakia 17 and 11, it says. For the life of the flesh is in the blood and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that making an atonement for the soul. Right. So now that kind of explains why, you know, uh, uh, when he when when you how about Shimei was shy. OK, when we wanted um when he told Moses, like, you have to sacrifice in order for to be uh, forgiven for sins. OK, he made the, 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 the sacrifice of goats and and uh, uh, sheep. OK, it, you know, uh, animals. OK. But like it said in the scriptures, but it wasn't truly 
open or accessible to everybody because you, in order to get forgiveness, you got to have that animal without spot or blemish. And you still needed the priest to do it because the priest could only enter the, the holy places. OK. OK, that's why Yahweh Shai, you know, that's why he had to come and make that ultimate sacrifice to make salvation open for all, all the Israelites. OK, accessible for everyone. OK. OK, let's get back to the book of Hebrews. Salakia. Hebrews 9, right? It's verse 23. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of all things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these, right? Okay? And that kind of goes into the Lord's prayer, okay? Let thy will be done on earth, as it is in heaven, okay? Okay? It was therefore necessary that the pattern of these things in heaven should be purified with these. Okay? Okay? Because the things of heaven are, are purified as well, okay? But the heavenly things themselves with better for sacrifices than these, talking about spiritual, okay? Yahweh Shai you know, was a better sacrifice, okay, that we should see receive salvation and that our, our, our souls be clean, okay? Okay, verse 24, for Hamashiach is not entered into the holy places made with hands, right, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God for us, right? Right. Okay. Um. Right. Yeah. When Yahweh Shai, uh, uh, when he made a sacrifice, he didn't uh make a sacrifice and then enter into like a church or something like that. No. Okay. But when he made that sacrifice, okay, he went into an even holier place, okay, which was uh to appear before the heavenly father for us on our behalf, right? Okay. Nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entered into the holy place every year with blood of others, right? Okay. For then must he have, uh, for then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world, but now once in the end of the world had he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself, right? Okay, because Yahweh Shai, okay, has been around since the foundation of the world. Okay. Okay, and that's what the, that's what it's saying. Yahweh Shai, you know, he's he was the Alpha Omega, the beginning and the end. Okay. And it, he did it better because if, if you know, uh, uh, what the scripture is saying is, you know, if he had, if this would have been as, uh, if he had to do it like the first way, he had to have been sacrificed often. He would have to have been sacrificed uh, once a year for the remissions of our sins. But since he sacrificed himself once, okay, he put away all sins by sacrificing himself. Why? Because he was perfect. OK. He didn't have spot nor blemish and he sacrificed unto Yahweh. And when he uh, 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 went away, he went to the holiest of places, you know, before Yahweh shy and sat on his right hand side. OK. OK. Verse 27. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Right. And that goes into um, First Peter, First Peter, uh, chapter three and twenty two. We're going to go to it. First Peter, right, chapter three. And twenty two, right, it says, who is gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, Yahweh, the angels and the authorities and power being made subject unto him. Right. 
Okay? And this also goes into uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, and that gives you the heavenly order. You got Yahweh, which who is the heavenly father, Yahweh Shai, which is the beloved heavenly son, okay? And as you can see right here, it says the angels and authorities and power being made subject unto him, okay? Okay? And that's talking about the angels, that's talking about the Israelite man, okay? And then you got the women and then their children. Okay, let's get back to Hebrews, book of Hebrews, right? Hebrews chapter nine, right? Okay, and is as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment, right? So when Yahweh shy when he made the altar sacrifice, the heavenly Father was pleased with him because he did his will. Okay. And your Howard Shai judgment was to sit on the right hand side of the Heavenly Father. Okay? That's a, that's a beautiful thing. And then he pleaded on our behalf for our salvation. Okay? Verse 28. So Hamashiach was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall appear. Salah, yeah. And to unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Right. So when you how when you when you how a shy come back with the heavenly host, okay, that's when salvation gonna take place, okay? Okay. And Yahweh Shai, he's still gonna be perfect. He ain't gonna have no sin, okay? And the ones that, that have salvation, okay? Okay, they, they the ones that, that get salvation that 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 follow Yahweh Shai, okay, that without sin, they're gonna have salvation. Okay? Yahweh Shai gonna uh 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 deliver them, and that's how they're gonna have salvation, okay? And with that, this, this I hope you've been truly been edified. This is your brother Howard Shai, GMS St. Louis. Until the next one, Kwame Asha Allah and Shalawam. Shalawam.